we are excited to share the first 3D digital scans of objects from the National Museum of African Art in a multi-year collaboration with the Smithsonian's Digitization Program Office and our leadership sponsor, Verizon, for the Our Shared Future, Reckoning with Our Racial Past initiative. These objects were selected because they tell meaningful stories to help us learn more about the complicated history and legacy of race and racism, while also humanizing the stories that have helped build a more equitable shared future. Borisi Set Kingeles wrote that his art was his way to contribute to a decolonized Africa, with his urban cityscape serving as a vehicle for reimagining Africa's collective future. From his early urban buildings to his vibrant cityscapes, Kingeles envisioned a progressive way of living, a way of regeneration. He built small models of futuristic utopian cityscapes fashioned from repurposed found materials. Kingele has created more than 300 sculptures, ranging from individual structures to entire cities, boasting colorful skyscrapers, stadiums, parks, monuments, waterways, and wide avenues. The Senegalese sculptor Usman So created this work as part of a series of sculptures commemorating the bicentennial of the French Revolution. Unlike those other sculptures, however, So's Toussaint Louverture depicts a figure who actually struggled against the French state. The military leader of the Haitian Revolution, Louverture successfully channeled an uprising of free people of color, and later, enslaved people, into an armed movement that had ended both slavery and French rule on the island. Toussaint Louverture's name and memory lives on as a symbol of autonomy, dignity, and liberation for peoples of African descent. Collected before 1914, this figure is one of six examples attributed to an as-yet-unnamed master artist. The figure likely served as a femba, an icon associated with Congo religious groups centered on healing and motherhood, particularly during periods in the 18th and 19th centuries when the trade in enslaved peoples was at its most disruptive in this region. She is a vision of goodness, a protector, a nourisher, a provider. Typically maternal qualities of nourishment and protection embodied in the gesture of this femba take on new meaning in such a horrific and traumatic context. Shonabari sees the cloth as both a potent byproduct of the colonial period and as a vehicle for post-colonial expressions of racial pride and resistance. Manufactured using technology imported from Indonesia to Dutch and English companies producing cloth for resale in African markets, these cloths often feature designs celebrating local political, cultural, and sports figures. This work is part of a project in which he features well-known Victorian figures as children. By reducing these famous figures to innocent children playing dress-up atop tables, Shonabari further highlights some of the absurdities of the Victorian culture that gave birth to its accompanying marketplaces and visual imagery. If you would like to learn more about these objects and their stories, as well as explore others, I encourage you to visit our website. Thank you. <laughs>